Today, we're gonna to be talking about a couple of things that you should never do with your personal finances. And this applies to things that you should never do with your money and also personal finance choices that you'll be faced with and why you should never do them and what you should be doing instead so that you don't get taken advantage off, you don't get ripped off because believe it or not, there are a lot of people that are in the business of legally ripping off other people. And that's what we're gonna be talking about in this video. So be sure to stick around to the very end so you can hear about five personal finance things that you should never do. And I may actually add some extras here so we may go over that five. Now, before we get into it, a very quick reminder here, as always, if you are new to the channel, my name is Ian, and on this channel, I talk about ways to make money, I talk about ways to save your money, I talk about ways to invest your money, I talk about bank accounts, credit cards, personal finance products, and everything to do with personal finance. So if you like these videos and you like these types of topics, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. I'll really appreciate it. It helps the channel out a ton. And also giving this video a thumbs up is 100% free. And be sure to subscribe with all the notifications on. And that way you'll ensure that you never miss the updates of when I post new videos on this channel. Now, the first personal finance mistake that you should never make, and we're gonna be starting with your favorite bit bank right here. And this is to never invest your money at the bank. Now, here's a problem with investing at your bank. First of all, they're going to have a really limited investment options or a bunch of limited investment options for you. And if you're a newbie to investing or you're new to this, then you probably won't even know, but they're not going to tell you that these investment options are limited. They're going to make it sound as if this is a great grand scheme to make you a lot of money and if it's going to make you wealthy. Now, your big bank will most likely not offer any fractional share investing, which means that if you wanna invest in Tesla or Amazon, which are stocks that will cost you over $1,000 per share, they're going to tell you that you need to save $1,000 or over to invest in these stocks. And if you go to invest elsewhere, you can get in with as little as $10 in these very same stocks. So the barrier to entry at the bank is much higher and they will really limit you in terms of investing options. Also, I don't think it's beginner friendly because for example, a very popular big bank down the road requires that you have a minimum of $1,500 to invest with them. And for the average working person that makes around $40,000 per year, you may not have $1,500 to start investing right now. And this may cause you to delay investing and you may put it off until next month and then the next month. And then the next thing you know, you go three years without actually starting investing just because there is a high minimum required to get involved in investing. If you take your money elsewhere and you invest at one of the better investment brokerages, you can invest with as little as $10 and sometimes even a single dollar. So that is also another plus and another reason why you should never invest with your bank. Now let's get into the fees, which is another reason why you should never invest with your big bank. And your favorite big bank down the road is going to charge you some expert advisory fees for telling you how to open your investment account and really just putting you in a boring index fund and letting your money sit there for a couple of years. So for this expert advice or service, they're gonna probably charge you 0.5%, which doesn't really sound like a lot, but as your investments grow and you have more money invested, 0.5% can turn out to be a very good sum of money. And this is just one of the fees that you'll have to pay at the bank. Now the bank is in the business of getting your money. So they're not going to sit down with you and the experts at the bank are not going to tell you that, Hey, you know what? You can invest with us, but we're going to charge you a bunch of ridiculous fees. We're going to give you limited options for investing. There's a higher minimum required here. You can't do fractional share investing. So you should just go over there, invest your money at that investment brokerage where you pay zero fees and zero commissions and there is no barrier to entry and you can invest in fractional shares and they're not gonna give you all the information here. So instead, they're going to tell you that they have the best products and the best investment solutions on the market right now, which in my opinion, and I may be wrong here, but in my opinion, this is just outright lying to you. So for that reason, I would say stay away from banks and never invest your money 
at the bank if you can avoid it. So that's the first financial or personal finance mistake that you should never make. And now the second one I want to talk about is the car salesman. I know a lot about this because I used to be one of these guys. And when you're working at a car or as a car salesman, whether it's in new or used cars, the only thing you really care about is getting the numbers up because the more cars you move and the faster you move them, the more in commissions you can make. And even if you're only making 1% in commissions on car sales, if you sell a $35,000 car, that means you'll be getting a commission of $350. And if you can move 10 of these cars per week, that is $3,500, which is equal to around $14,000 per month. And by the way, guys, $35,000 is around the average for a new car in America. And actually that's probably up to around $40,000 now as inflation is moving really fast. Now at the car lot, the car salesman has one job and that job is to get you into the most expensive vehicle that they can at all cost. So for that reason, you should never ask a car salesman any questions such as, hey, should I buy one of these used cars to save $7,000 or should I go with the newer model because they're going to tell you something like, hey, you know what? The used one is good. It's certified pre-owned. It won't give you any issues but the new one is going to be much more reliable. You're going to get more miles out of it. You're going to get free servicing for a year. It's only $7,000 more or whatever. So pay for the new one. And in reality, the used car is probably just as reliable as the new one. And you may even be saving more than just a couple thousand dollars by buying a cheaper model car. Also, you never want to ask the car salesman what your car is currently worth because they're going to lowball you right off the rip really badly. They're probably going to tell you that your car is worth $2,000 when in fact you could sell your car for $10,000 because they know that they can give you $2,000 for the car that you traded in and they can flip it for 10 k and they can make $8,000 right there. And even then, they're still going to want to put you in an expensive new car so they can make the highest commission possible. So if you're hunting for a car, take advantage of resources like KBB. That is a popular website where you can look up the value of your car in your area, depending on the mileage and the age and condition. And also other resources such as Carfax, we can get a good look at the history of a vehicle before you purchase it. You can get an individual history on that vehicle so you can know if the vehicle has been in any accidents if there's been any major issues reported. You can know if the transmission was replaced or if the wheels fell off at one point in time. And that way you can really get a good idea. We can actually get the information that you're actually looking for on that vehicle instead of asking the car salesman because they have one job and that job is to get you into the most expensive car that they can possibly qualify you for. Now, the third personal finance mistake that you should never make is to go down to your favorite big bank, get pre-approved for a mortgage, and just simply ask them and say, how much can I afford on a brand new home? Now, this is a bad idea because if you ask them how much you can get for a brand new home, they're probably gonna give you a lot of money, probably a lot more than you can actually afford. If you look on paper, yes, you could probably afford the payments, but when you factor in all the other expenses and the cost of living, you'll really be stretching yourself and the banks will have no problems in giving you a really big loan that you just cannot afford. In fact, the bank may approve you for a loan which takes up as much as 40 to 50% of your gross monthly income, which is your income before taxes, which is really bad. So if you're on the hunt for a mortgage, I would say do your math at home and see how much you can actually afford before you go into the bank. And that way, when they tell you that you can afford, let's say a house for $650,000, you know right off the bat that you cannot comfortably afford those payments. Instead, you'll know that your limit is at 350 dollars or $400,000 whatever you can actually afford. If you guys want some free resources, you can look at Zillow, which has an affordability calculator, which you can take or which takes your income, your credit score. Another factor is your down payment. It tells you how much you could afford and what your payments would be. You could also use Quicken Loans or Rocket Mortgage. They also have a free tool on there that will actually take your credit score and pre-qualify you for a loan. And you can adjust the down payment and other factors and play around with that. It will give you a really good idea of how much you can afford and what your payments will be like. And it gives you a complete breakdown. So be sure to check out those free resources before you actually walk into your favorite root bank and ask them to pre-approve you for a mortgage. Now, if you're wondering why would the bank do this? Why would they give you a huge loan when they know you can't afford it? 
The thing is that banks want your money. So for the first five to 10 years of your mortgage, you'll be paying more towards interest than the actual loan. And so the banks stand to make a lot of money in the first five to 10 years of the mortgage. And that is why they will try to approve you for as much as they possibly can and put you into payments that you barely can afford. It's kind of like ripping you off, and maybe that's just my opinion, but I think this is kind of like ripping people off if you really know that they cannot afford something, but you're pushing them to the limits of their income. Now, I probably should have mentioned this one before, but the next personal finance mistake that you should never make and that you should really avoid is going into your favorite big bank and asking them if it's worth leaving your money in a high yield savings account or a certificate of deposit because they'll tell you that yes, you should lock your money into a CD for five years because they're going to give you 7% in interest and that's going to grow your money and your money is gonna be safe and that is actually not 100% true because yes, your money may be safe because the banks are FDIC insured up to $250,000, but what they're not telling you upfront is that they can't control the Fed rates, which will influence your savings account interest rates and probably not your CD rates because those are locked, but for your high yield savings account, the rates can switch at any time. So you may be getting 3% in interest right now, and that's really good. And the next thing you know, you're getting 0.5% in interest, and the banks really have no control over this. Also, remember, the bank wants your money. They actually need your money so they can make more money. So they will make this sound as good as they can, and they'll tell you all the pros and sugarcoat this because they want you to keep as much of your money as you possibly can at the bank and inflation is currently heading towards 5% and the bank is probably giving you 1% in interest but they're not telling you that inflation is nearly at 5% and so you think that you're making money by saving your money at the bank when in reality you're just losing around 3 to 4% every single year to inflation. Now the fifth personal finance mistake to avoid is going to a life insurance salesman or woman and asking them if you should choose whole life insurance or term life insurance. And I'm sure there may be some insurance salespeople who will actually give you the better option. But the thing that you have to understand here is that insurance agents get paid really well from commissions. And this is why they want to sell you the most expensive products. So for example, term life insurance is usually way less expensive than whole life insurance sometimes over 10 times less expensive. But when they sell you whole life insurance, they're usually getting around 70 to 80% and sometimes more of that money that you paid in the first year and then around 20% of your premiums for your entire life. So you sign up for this policy and 20% of your premiums every single year is the commission for the insurance agent that signed you up for that policy. And this is why they have an incentive to be very biased and to sell you the most expensive life insurance products that you probably don't need and are going to cost you way more. And this is why you should never ask them which insurance policy is best for you. And instead you should research on your own and figure out what you need and what is best for you and your family before going over to the insurance agent. Because if you go over to them blindly, they're just going to rip you off. And again, this is just my opinion, but I think it's just ripping people off. Now, this video was supposed to be five personal finance mistakes to avoid, but I'll add an extra one here. And so the sixth one is that you should never ask your credit card company for credit card advice on how to use your credit card because they're gonna tell you that all you really have to do is to pay the minimum balance on time every month and you'll be fine. But it's actually only half of the story. If you only make the minimum payments, then you're just making the credit card company a lot of money and sinking yourself further and further into debt. In fact, I don't think if you call into your credit card company, the agent on the line could be completely honest with you and tell you that you should pay your credit card off in full every month because maybe they may be fired and so they have to follow the script that they were taught. So a couple of myths to debunk here is that one, carrying a balance helps your credit score and this is far from the truth. The balance on your credit card will not help boost your credit score. You're better off paying it off in full every month and the only thing that carrying a balance will help you to do is to make that credit card company some more money. So the best way to use your credit card is to put a small bill or a couple of small bills on it each month. Set it on auto pay, paid in full every month. Never pay any interest. Also get a credit card that doesn't charge you any annual fees. 
and then you will see your credit score skyrocketing and you'll also never go into any debt. And if your credit card isn't a rewards credit card, get one and that way you can get some cash back in the process and this will be a win-win for you, but you never want to leave a balance on your credit card and pay the minimum monthly payments because you're just making the credit card company more money and they're not going to tell you the truth because they want you to be charged interest so they can make even more money. So these are six personal finance mistakes that you should never make. And if you guys have anything else to add to this list, be sure to comment below. And with that said, thank you guys so much for watching. All the best. And I will see you guys soon in the next one.